Discovering possibilities and potential with passion every day. This is a TPPN production. Your ability to understand how it works. To understand how it works. To understand how it works. Live from Indianapolis, Indiana, this is the iPad Possibility Show with your host, Tim Chat. Welcome to the iPad Possibilities Podcast, episode number 60, Revolutionary iPads. Before we get this show started, I wanted to remind everybody that this is actually a part two of the live show we did Sunday night with Steve, John, and myself. This half, we discuss how you can use the iPad in like a revolutionary war. What would it be like with iPads back then? So that is what this next hour is all about. And if you want to catch hour number one, part one, where we discuss all the latest news and some just cool ideas that we have, uh, check out episode number 59, Consanduity <laughs> Frash. So check that episode out, and without further delay, let's bring you to today's episode. <laughs> well, uh, that rounds out the first part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and I will break this up in two parts for the listeners, so this is now part two for the Wednesday-Thursday episode. <laughs> I don't feel like we need to do the Wayne's World thing. <laughs> <laughs> We've now zoned into... <laughs> Transporting through time here now <laughs> on Wednesday. <laughs> well, with that said, the topic for this show is imagine it is 1776. This time there's electricity. This time there's 3G. This time there's three G, uh, there's GPS, and this time there are iPads. Dun, 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 dun. Da, da, da. And it's independence. We want our independence from Great Britain. Well, how are we going to use our iPads to do that? <laughs> <laughs> so that's this topic of this show. We are going to throw them at the British Army like the flying saucers and <laughs> confuse them with the crazy, you know, we rule. <laughs> While they're playing we rule, we'll run over and bayonet them. <laughs> so 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 let me jump in here because Tim when I when I when I started looking over what you were proposing for this this topic I thought it was I thought it was interesting but the one thing that occurred to me is unless you're saying that we have the electricity and the 3G and the GPS and the iPads and the British don't then I think this whole thing actually helps the British more than it helps us. <laughs> well I'll be playing cards on her iPad. Well, because it, it allows them to, to communicate more, to uh, coordinate more. I mean, they, they really do have the numerical advantage, the, the uh, superiority of armies. I mean, and so... Well, if, you, know, you know, the iPad was created in America. True. Why would we want to export to Britain right now? <laughs> John, you're, you're right, such a so, buzzkill, man. So I'm, just, I'm just trying to set the game rule. So the game says... The Brits have to stick with the Kindle. Then, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Then, all right, let's play. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I was. I, I, I thought about that too, and I was thinking, okay, so if we have the iPad and we have we have the internet and we have electricity, do we have nukes? No nukes. <laughs> no, no nukes. <laughs> no nukes. Oh man, I don't like that game. No, it's, uh, yeah, I guess Tesla coils. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the way that the way that I was able to wrap my brain around this whole thing was to think, okay, how could we use this iPad for modern warfare? Because it sounds like you know, if the Civil War were to happen today, you know, it, you know, because I, I mean, a lot of things would have to happen in order to have the iPad in our hands today. So if if we were to have a, a war today, how would we use the iPad? Kind of thing is what, the way I was looking at it. So was it too far off? By uh, coming? That's pretty close. I mean, yeah, that's pretty close. 
<laughs> I've got a grasp to something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like Back to the Future. We bring iPads back with us, but then we also bring back our 3G. And the internet. Yeah. <laughs> There's web so, pages. So really, um, I mean, the, 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 the things you talk about, the, the uh, communications is, is probably the biggest thing, yeah. I think that would be a major improvement. Um, being able to communicate with small groups that, you know, America did rural warfare against Britain, right? Mm-hmm. And small groups dispersed, no central coordination. Um, iPads in each of those groups' hands would allow us to be emailing, Skyping. You know, we would. it would just be a much greater coordinated effort Um Ability to resupply very quickly. Um, yeah, all those things would be just just tremendous. Uh, I have a we, question. Uh, we, we would have kicked their butt much quicker. I hope I have an answer, Steve. So, are, are these iPads jailbroken or are not jailbroken? <laughs> well, for revolutionary people, I'd imagine we'd want to jailbreak them. Okay. <laughs> so, if rebels. they're jailbroken, you can create your own Wi-Fi hotspot. And did you hear about those Russians that were? The Russian that was, was just uh, arrested for the spy yeah. because they were yeah. using Wi-Fi drop points, basically. And that would be awesome way to communicate in these little cells. You know, you sit in a in little cafe with your iPad, create a high fi- Wi-Fi hotspot yeah. using MyWi or something, yeah. and, you know, and share information and create a little, you know. Or even we'd, using- we'd have to create little Kindle shape cases to put the iPads in so we couldn't see we were using iPads. And don't leave it in the bar. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, something like that, or using those uh, um, the the social networks for that you know, like like a uh, oh, oh, like the the geotagging, you know, yeah. geotag social networks. It would be just geocaching. Geo- geocaching, yeah. I'm sorry, geocaching. You could have with Evernote, you know, taking picture, uh, taking pictures. You have to have a camera with your iFi card or whatever. But you could use the you know the iPad app and see the map of where pictures are taken and all that. Yeah. I mean, the, the key, though, is to make – make because I mean, I'm assuming that both sides have the iPad, right? Cause, well, I'm, I don't think no, so. No, we just said no. <laughs> well, well, I mean, so say that, you know, I'm, I'm a really horrible shot, and I'm taking prisoner. <laughs> Someone's got my iPad now. Oh, yeah. That's a, well, you, yeah, but they don't have your password, so they can't get on our internet. No, you, you shoot just, it before you get captured, Steve. You're, you're almost where I was going. I was going to go with mobile me. Self-destruct mode. You, you can wipe these things down. Yeah. You know, the there moment. you go. There you go. Got so it. mobile me would definitely be something. That oh, would yeah. Be, that was not in our yeah. list. And so yeah, no, that that, that was that was that just happened up here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like mobile me, you know. So yeah. if you're uh, if you're if you're wanting to find out where your troop deployments are all at, and everybody's registered with mobile me, you can just kind of log on there. I was just using this. this oh yeah, little find while ago. your iPad, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I was using that a little while ago to find out where my wife had parked the car when we were going to a park for the fireworks, and I had no idea where in the world she parked. So I just brought up, you know, find my iPhone and, you know went to right where she was parked. Now, if you had that, like, times 25 for your entire troop squadron, you could see where everybody is individually. And, yeah, because you know, they, the, they have the app now, and you could label yeah. your iPad, you know, red red group one. <laughs> <laughs> There's something very military-sounding cool. Yeah. Right. So, so the first step, you know, uh, you're going to need to create your declaration of independence, right? So I figure some tools you might want to have are uh, pages, your keyboard doc, uh, and a stylus of some sort to have your signatures, and you can copy and paste those in the pages and email those off to Britain to say, hey, we're, we're going free here. Yeah, which reminds me, I, I did buy that stylus you, you recommended. You that was a really cool one. You like it? Yeah. I like it. It's, it's a little testy. It, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't you know make contact all the time, but I like it. It's mm-hmm. definitely it's fun. Yeah. I love it. That's the Dadgy stylus uh, he's talking yep. about there. Yep, it's good stuff. So, any other tools we might need in, you know, telling Britain uh, this is what we're doing? <laughs> the declaration. <laughs> we need to declare why we are HP printers, of course, you know. Yeah, you can email yeah. the declaration of dependence to everybody's <laughs> printer. <laughs> How long until that gets hacked, you know? Oh. <laughs> Everybody just, you know, gets spammed. But anyway, yeah, back to the war. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can email their, you know, Britain's HP printer your declaration. 
There you go. That would be awesome. <laughs> well, and, and email everybody in the colonies so they know what's going on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your, your daily newsletter as far as how we're doing. And, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Subscribe by H.P. Uh, Pritcher. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> this this podcast is not sponsored by HP. No, in no way whatsoever. <laughs> no, I wish it was, but yes. uh, anyways, HP, if you're listening, we'll work I'm on currently that. looking we'll work for sponsors. Yes. There is an opening, right? <laughs> there is. So, uh, someone <laughs> email uh, your uh, your response to my printer at <laughs> <laughs> iPad Possibilities at gmail dot com. There you go. So, uh, someone mentioned uh, keeping logs and Mac Journal for iPad being a tool to do that. Was that you, Steve, or was that John? There. It must have been John. Must have been Steve. <laughs> <laughs> wow! No one claims this. Uh, I, Mac I, Journal. Mac M A K Journal for iPad with a link in there. Keeping logs. This is a new category I did not even have. Oh, 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 oh it's oh, Max no. Journal. It's Max. That, okay. Ah, uh, gotcha. That was me. Okay, I was wondering about <laughs> I, that. I, like, <laughs> I confess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I, I was thinking, you know, because a lot of the the civil the the, uh, the Revolutionary War information is in their history books today because the journals the soldier wrote, the soldiers wrote where they were out in the field and things. So if they had an iPad. Yeah, I was trying to think. Okay, what would they? What what tool would they use to keep their logs while they're out on the battlefield? And that is a really cool uh, kind of log diary where you can insert pictures and stuff like that, and just keep a log throughout the day. And it's 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 a well designed intuitive app yeah. for that. So that I, I thought that would be that would probably be something that you know you would you would uh, use as your diary. Yeah, definitely. Your war diary. Uh, your war diary. You need a diary. Yeah. Where would Anne Frank be without her diary? Today we took Bunker Hill. Oh, we didn't take Bunker Hill. Oops. <laughs> uh, so uh, the next thing, uh, what if you want to communicate with Britain? I think uh, email and Skype are tools to, you know, if you want to do a, you know, a phone conversation over with Britain, tell them, hey, this is what we're doing. Uh, you know, I think those are good tools. Yeah, for for yep. conversations, I mean, Skype, obviously. Yeah. So Skype, I think would, if there is ever another war. Yeah. Uh, I think that Skype would be key. <laughs> so. what, what about an SMS client for uh, for the iPad? Do you guys have any well, uh, joke uh iPads? I'm a, I'm a Google Voice guy, so that is the only SMS I need. Okay. I use I use Text Plus. You for did, my okay. for my for that kind of stuff and yeah, as a matter of fact there's a really good community on text plus for ipads and ipad it's called ipad chat so if you have text plus you know definitely check out you, you can join that community and just you know chat with all kinds of people talking about the ipad sometimes it gets heated <laughs> some some ipad haters get on there and yeah. they 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 I'm a sucker for that, you know. Anytime someone gets on there and starts hating, I got to, I've got to set them straight, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that, it's that, not uh, just a, well, it is just a big giant iPod Touch, but it's yeah. awesome because it is that. Yeah, as a matter of fact, that's that's where I saw that that on there was the Text Plus. So, yeah. You know, that that would be a, a way, you know, create a yeah. community you know, so that you can you can communicate with each other. Oh yeah, and, definitely. And you can send SMS messages out of that too, so it's kind of a gateway for SMSs. Yeah. And uh, along with organizing, uh, organizing the troops is the next uh, thing I thought of. And uh, besides uh, the mobile me and just blowing, knowing where everyone is, I think a shared Evernote notebook and uh, each troop, each uh, you know army could have their own note for the you know roster and all that and different information they want to share between people. And uh, what other tools uh, do you think would be good for that? Numbers. Numbers, yeah. Definitely Army, number. Army lives on a spreadsheet these days, so. How do you uh, share the the numbers documents, you think? iWork.com. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, but I, I mean, the numbers for, you know, inventories and, you know, Man, all, the, all the supply stuff and, supplies. and everything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got that, and you also have Google Docs using Office, uh, not yeah. Office Plus, because that's that let that's let me down. Uh, There's a uh, um, oh, what was that other app that I've just recently discovered that yeah, does? Yeah, when we used that uh, in Columbus. Let me find it. Uh, it's one called um, Office Connect or something like that. 
I mean, it's it's a docks my to go. Quick. It docks to go. That's what yep. it is. Docks. There you go. Yeah, docks to go. That will actually open up Google Docs really nicely and use spreadsheets. So that that's a that's a cool tool if you want to use something a little more open than mm -hmm. you know, than the Microsoft stuff or the or the number stuff. Yep. And uh, trip journal is a recommendation from the chat room as well for uh, you know keeping your uh, notes and everything. So, uh, so the next thing uh, you're gonna have some night battles, I would imagine, right? Uh, and you're gonna want to signal people, and I would imagine uh, you'd want some flashlight apps on there to, to do that. No, I, I have to I have to take issue with you here. You do? Okay. But the last <laughs> thing that I want is my iPad that's actually winning the war for me. <laughs> Out there is a big light waiting for the British to shoot at. I, but what I, if, I, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. What if one by land to two by sea? Though I mean that that wasn't that kind of like a you know the lanterns up there in in the tower that would. No, what I can see was, him putting them in the tower for lanterns, but I can't see him moving around a battlefield using the iPad as a flashlight. <laughs> Here, shoot, shoot the iPad. If we can defeat this army, if we shoot all their iPads, decoys. There we go. They're decoys. <laughs> Fake iPads created by Steve Jobs of the 1700s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I guess if, if I was going to have an a flashlight, I would get a flashlight. <laughs> but but with that being said i have used my ipad as a flashlight at least once a day uh, so, likewise i have too it's a yeah. great flashlight it's, yeah it's great inside a house it's a floodlight a little less on a battlefield anyway. right yeah you're not you're not going to see very far with the ipad well in those times right if you have a strong enough you know would an invisible shield be enough to stop a a bullet back in those times, the little pebble things. That, I you know. don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> it would make the glass shatter less. Okay. <laughs> Put it that way. You wouldn't strong, get as many fragments. Strong protection. You know, we need something like that. <laughs> the glass would still break, but the shattered glass wouldn't fly as far. Okay. <laughs> You'd have to have a special case made that yeah. would be, we gotta get you know, testing done this. It, it piece of glass a couple inches in front of the iPad screen, and then you put the invisible shield on top of that, and yeah. And, and I, and I don't know if we're going in order or not, but I threw a case in there in the show notes for uh for oh, that. I saw that, yeah. The the um the the tough case. It, it's basically what it is is. A, you can go to you can go to uh, any office store and you can get these clipboards that have like this this storage container built into the clipboard. Yeah. And it looks like they started with that and then they they customized it with the iPad in mind and they put a bunch of foam in there and stuff so that I mean I think that you could drop this thing from like five stories and have it land and it would still be fine. That you is know. what you know parents need. <laughs> oh, you're telling me. <laughs> yeah, one of our iPads actually dropped from our bed today, and that was not good. My daughter was sitting there playing with it and decided, oh, I don't want to play with it anymore. It dropped. On the floor. <laughs> what else do you do with everything that you don't want yeah, to play with? Yeah, just throw it around. All right. So that's, that's, that's a really cool thing, because if you're out on the field and you've yeah. got your iPad, that thing is definitely vulnerable and it's easy to break. Yeah. So if you, you, need you know, put it on your chest, of a chest mount, it could be... Uh, you know, a little bulletproof thing if they have cases that have, you know, Kevlar on them. <laughs> yeah, you can wear it like Flavor Flip <laughs> and have it on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one thing, when you're having a like battle... A pad. <laughs> exactly. I mean, uh, one thing, you're not going to want to map out and strategize your battles on an iPad. And I think OmniGraffle would be an awesome tool to do this because, you know, you're sure. able to link things together in there, you know, all that. Uh, what do you think about, you know, planning out the battles and strategizing? What are the tools to do that? Google Maps. Ah, uh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Is it real Google time Maps. enough, though, for that to be effective? Uh, well, you could, uh, Google Maps tied with uh, email could be. I mean, if, you, if mm -hmm. say, for example, I want to pinpoint a location that we would be, you know, have as a rendezvous or maybe where I think that the, the enemy troops are, you got, I could drop a pin and then email that location to you using yeah. Google Maps and say, right. you know, right. you know, don't, don't, don't go here <laughs> because you yeah. will be shot. Or, or if you needed to go to a couple of different places, maybe you want it's on my way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice one. Absolutely. Yep. And and if you're hungry, then you know where would be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where's the perhaps? Uh, 
they should have a dock accessory that you know detects life forms and you could track down squirrels. <laughs> you mean a tricorder? <laughs> oh, great, a tricorder. All right. <laughs> well, and you can uh, we could subvert Yelp to really have code in for the spies, so the spies could use Yelp recommendations to communicate their code about different places. <laughs> when I ate here, the bird the bird flew south. I repeat, the bird flew south when I ate here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one would ever guess that was code. <laughs> no, not at all. This is Kentucky Fried Chicken, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> So, as you're doing all these amazing things with the GPS and tricorders, how are we going to keep this sucker charged? And uh, we have this uh, Quicker Tech foldable solar panel charger for the iPad. I so want one of those. Is that, that That's your pick in there, right? Your uh, recommendation yeah. here? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, uh, we're in process of obtaining one in the, I'm in looking the iPad at it right show. now. I'm loading the page up. Uh, how much do these guys run for? It's a few hundred bucks, I think. Okay. I'm not. I'm not sure exactly, um, but yeah, we're, we're, an iPad, probably. Probably, uh, That's pretty sweet. Yeah. The problem I've had with all of the sol solar chargers that I've had so far is they don't put out enough. It takes so much time. Uh, yeah, they don't. Yeah, it just takes forever to charge this thing. But this one supposedly can, you know, charge your iPad just like the wall charger. Oh, cool. Given that yeah, you have ten, it ten watts, ten watts, I see. I do. It's $200, yeah. $250. Yeah, I do. Yeah, so that's... Yeah. Uh, I, I want to play with one. So we've, we've contacted them, and hopefully they'll they'll send us a, a toy to play with. Yeah, it'd be very cool, because if you leave your iPad in your, in your car back then, your little horse Humvee, you know, uh, that'd be useful. Well, yeah. you, could put, you could put this on top of the carriage, you know, roof. And... Oh, yeah. And plus, back in you know military, if it's a military scenario, you're gonna have multiple iPads, so you could have one in the, in the, uh, you know, queue to use. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That now, what we need in addition to this is we need some kind of hand crank iPad charger. Oh so yeah. You never know whether <laughs> if you got a couple of uh, cloudy days, you know, your iPad's gonna be depleted. Yeah, and you don't have electric electric sockets, you know, out in the <laughs> forest. Not out in the woods, no. Nope. Fire. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say nobody's going to invent that. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be cool. Yeah. Or some way to utilize fire to charge your iPad. That would be handy. Hmm. I don't know how safe that would be. Yeah. <laughs> you just use a steam generator. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so uh, we've talked about protection. You want good protection. But I think uh, some other apps needed you know wordpress and twitter to update your country on how you're doing in the war if you're getting killed or not right <laughs> Do you so, so I, would say, I would say wordpress yes twitter no twitter no twitter will be too easy for people to say oh we're being run over we're dying we don't want yeah. that you don't want to spread the bad stuff <laughs> send gloves <laughs> yeah. yeah send boots <laughs> starving <laughs> I mean up. yeah losing the war <laughs> I think that if there is another war and the and the internet stays up I think Twitter would be an awesome tool so I mean, just look what happened yeah, and, and nothing, nothing else is trending. You know, you yeah. can see just kind of what's going on, breaking news. You know, I, I get news from Twitter before I get it from anywhere else. Oh, like yeah, us. I, I mean, I don't know if you've seen recently, but we had a, an earthquake in Michigan. Yeah, I heard you about know, that. Actually, it, was, it wasn't in Michigan, but we could feel the, the, the results of it here in Michigan. And before I, you know, opened CNN or anything, the first thing I did was launch Twitter. And I did yeah. a Twitter search for the word earthquake just to see if anybody was talking about an earthquake. And sure enough, there it was, you know, seconds ago, earthquake, you know, so on and so on. So, yeah, I got up to the second news. And it wasn't until, I don't know, maybe an hour later that it hit the major news networks. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, Twitter would be an awesome tool for finding out that the red coats are coming. <laughs> so someone could Twitter search red coats and there you yeah, go. Yeah, there you go. 
or Twitter search your uh, <laughs> surrounding cities to see if they're getting killed or not, you know. So, right. Yeah. Interesting scenarios here. Any final thoughts on how you would utilize your iPad in a revolutionary war? Um, yeah, actually, Nefron had pointed out in the chat room, push notifications. Oh, yes. You, yes. you need to use your push, which means Apple yep. needs their push servers up. <laughs> yes, they need to. We need to rally around Apple's push servers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I so but yeah, I mean, it's the iPad. I think. I mean, we, we're talking about you know a, a fictitious scenario. Of, Very fictitious. Know, yes. But I think in reality, yeah, it will be you know something like this will be a major tool for the oh, military. Yeah. In any any future confrontation, as a matter of fact, I would be astonished if they're not already integrating it into the battlefield right now. Oh yeah, for sure. So, yeah, they, I, I mean, I know that they already have have done a number of things with with those uh, things that nobody else ever bought those tablet PC thingies. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I think I, iPad is even um, more appropriate for for the battlefield. I know there's there are iPad developers. Um, you know, registered iPad developers in the military. That I mean, for for the military, not just individuals, but um, yeah. So yeah, they're working on, on, on yeah. On a serious note, I think iPads are currently and in the future will be a huge tool to help. You know, in this in you know having confrontations like this. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It will be. I mean, this just to have a tablet device with so much power at your hands and so much connectivity at your hands is a game changer too when it comes to war so well yeah, it fits, the portability it, nature of it it fits in so well with the way that the u.s military operates i mean a lot of other countries militaries you know are, are much more hierarchical organizations where you know there's not a lot of thinking in the lower levels and the u.s military thrives on individual initiative and the ability to you know, execute things at, at a low level, and and the be, ability to get that information to those people actually there in the trenches, if you will, uh, would just be great. Yeah, and it's just such a portable device. Laptops and other computers, they're easy to break. I, I mean, in the military scenario, especially iPads, they're very durable. For I mean, they do break, but harder. Uh, <laughs> I've I've already bent the corner on mine, so I, I I went out and got this contour case. They sell them at the Apple Store now, and yeah. it's a it's a really good hard case for the iPad. And ever since I've had this thing on there, it survived a, a few falls. Yeah. Already, and it's interesting when I went into the Apple Store and I said, you know, I'm looking for something to prevent my iPad when it falls from breaking. They looked at me like I had just committed sacrilege. <laughs> Like, why said, would you drop your right. iPad? I said, how about step one? You don't drop the iPad. <laughs> like, well, and no, if the okay. iPad is falling, you must sacrifice yourself and die underneath it. <laughs> so, and yeah, yeah, like like it's your child or something. And yeah, she looked seriously just astonished that I would ask for it. And that was back before these things were out. And finally, they they came out with these. And then you know, when I was in there and buying this, I I told them, you know. It's about time this was in the store because I've already got a dent in mine and I showed it to her and she's like, That's the first time I've ever heard of an iPad falling. I was like, Oh really? <laughs> really? You must not have any kids or know anything like Google that. that. Yes. <laughs> it happens. People leave iPads on the hood of a car and drive off for getting them and it's not good. Oh yeah. There's there's lots of stories. So yeah, but this has been an awesome uh, case so the contour case is my recommendation for if you're going to be on the, the one you had at uh, the uh, Columbus. Yeah. Okay. The clear. Yep. Yep. It's, it's on there right. Oh, I'm on the back side of the camera. It's not on there. But okay. It's oh, it's on there. One final thing before we move away from the war stuff. Uh, recommendation: My Y on your iPad 3G with an iPhone 4 to have FaceTime anywhere. Killer future for your uh, for your war scenario when you need uh, live video, so yeah, definitely, definitely. yeah, yep. Because you could be uh, FaceTiming, you know, across the field as you converge on your enemy, and you could show with the front or back camera different things they need to see. So, or definitely. maybe they don't want to see. Oh yeah, it, and that's that's where the propaganda could come in with the iPad. You can 
you can definitely get things out to the masses faster. Yeah. You know, what's going on on the battlefield. So if you want to 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 use it for as a propaganda tool, that would be mm-hmm. that would be that would work. Yeah. So yeah, iPads in military use. I'd I'd love to talk to somebody that actually uses an iPad in military. I think that'd be an interesting conversation to have. And if you're out there and want to talk about it, I'd love to share some time and do a bit more serious conversation on it rather than. <laughs> hey, we are being serious. Come on. <laughs> we are. We've been having a lot of fun being serious, though. You know. I wonder. Uh, I wonder what's what Square Trade uh, warranty an iPad used in military? Uh, I don't know. You know. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe. I wonder if that would void your warranty. Like there's a bullet hole in this. Like, I we, live in a bad area of town. We have a vicinity of musket fire claws in our community. <laughs> if you are within five miles of, a, of any musket fire, yeah, we're, your we're, is null and we're void. zone exclusions. <laughs> you have triggered the musket fire vicinity <laughs> detector on your iPad. Yeah, that, that smoke. You know, instead of the the wet detector, they that you know. Gunpowder detector. Gunpowder residue <laughs> uses the yeah. microphone to detect any any loud noises nearby. And oh yeah, I'm yeah. Sure. your warranty. <laughs> yeah, iPad 2.0. Yeah, it's there you coming. Go. The, Sorry, Apple. Muskets. We just let you know about that. You know. Yeah. So muskets. yeah, that wraps up uh, my kind of crazy idea of it's 1776, and you have an iPad. What do you do? So, John and I have been playing with an app called Outliner, and uh, can you share your thoughts on this and how you can make across this app, John? Sure. Um, actually, there's there's two uh, uh, Outliner uh, apps that uh, that I was looking at, um, and um, basically, I'm I'm a lover of Omni Outliner from the Omni Group forever, and they're not bringing it out yet it's driving me crazy i want on the outliner on the ipad but in the meantime i've been looking at you know what are the other options there while while we're waiting with bated breath so um there are two outliners that that i took a look at um one is called um let me see what one called one is called uh, outliner for ipad and the other one is called Simple Outliner. And they both have um, counterparts on the iPhone. Um, I don't think either one of them are, are universal apps, so you have to buy it for each, each device. But um, both of these are, are nice, um, pretty nice tools. Um, the first one I tried was uh, Outliner for iPad, which is $4.99 in the App Store. Um, some of the things I liked about it, or the, uh, the ability to attach notes to the different uh, items in an in a outline. Uh, very easy one click. Uh, simple Outliner also has notes a little bit different way where you actually scroll over. Um, not scroll, but actually swipe over and get a whole page that you can put notes in. Um, Quick keyboard entry on on Outliner for iPad, which was superior to Simple Outliner in that if you're just throwing a lot of things and you're using the keyboard, return creates another, um, you know, kind of a sister or sibling kind of outline level. And that was really great to be able to do that. Um, You can, uh, Outliner for iPad also allows you to make tasks with a checkbox and dates are associated with it, uh, at least creation date and completion date. Uh, It does emailing a text and OPML, which is the outlining um, markup language. Uh, Resorting the list is is pretty straightforward. Demoting and promoting, uh, you use the tapping of arrows, which at the the top, um, which it pretty nice. You can do sharing. Uh, they have an online, a free online service where you can you can uh, sync up with the online service. That's pretty nice. Um, you can also, it's, it's very professional looking. I, I liked the look of Outliner for iPad more than simple Outliner in, in that it was very professional looking. And um, I like the menu at the top 
with all the actions in a single palette, kind of in the center of the screen. And I also like the standard way they did with a popover for adding documents or picking documents. Simple Outliner was cheaper. It's $2.99. Um, I like the little icons you can add to uh, to each item in the list, in the icon or in the outline list. There are a whole slew of, of little different icons you can add. Um, unfortunately, the checkbox isn't checkable, so that would you know you actually would have to go in and edit the item and put a check mark in front of it instead of the open checkbox. Um, I did like selecting a fonts in Simple Outliner. It was uh, very easy to do that. I couldn't find any way to do that in Outliner for iPad. Um, Simple Outliner, though, did have two killer features. One was zooming. So you can zoom the entire list. So just scrolling on the bottom, and actually, let me, let me see if I can bring this up real quick. My camera's not as sophisticated as these other guys for... for <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm trying for, to show the yeah. feature list as you're talking. For, yeah, for doing this, but... Um, if I can, if I can get this up here, I will, I will show it. And um, uh, my magic cauliflowers appear to be uh, ready to harvest here. So if I can, <laughs> if I can get this on the screen and and see here, uh, and, uh, I'm very close to my uh, next realm. So the very the exciting. interesting thing is if you if you swipe along the bottom, you can zoom the text in and out very killer feature for an outline so i'm just i'm just moving my my finger so you're not zooming you're just moving the ipad <laughs> no i'm not so <laughs> just kill, very killer feature um the other killer feature is uh it has search so if you swipe to the side which i can't do backwards like this uh you get a, a page here where you can you have a little search bar at the top, and you can search for any occurrences. They'll come down here. Um, a great, a great feature for having multiple uh, outlines or big outlines. So uh, those are two killer features that I wish Outliner for iPad had, but Simple Outliner had those. Uh, and Simple Outliner also has, uh, instead of doing a website for sharing your outlines, they bring up a web server on the iPad which is pretty cool. I, I, I like that actually better than sharing my outlines out to you know somebody else's website. So that's kind of a, a good feature as well. The only problem with that is that they use the standard port 80, which I think they should use a different port so in case your iPad is using multiple web servers. So, Tim, what did you think? Well, I'm a big Evernote user, as many people are aware of, and... I always look for some sort of integration there. And that was a bit of a disappointment except with Outliner and the different tools I was using. So I, I'd really like to see an export to PDF option in either of those to simply mail that to my Evernote account. I do like the ability to sync it so I can use it on an iPhone or whatever. But uh, overall, now they both they both have emailing out so yeah the format though i'm kind of curious as to how well it would translate to so I'll, outliner for ipad emails out uh either a text or an opml um simple outliner will out will export either a opml or a csv or cvs i forget which version of it or csv i guess it yeah. is i'm wondering so, how all those translate though in something like evernote would i be able to pull that up is it a iPad friendly format. Yeah, I that's probably something uh, uh, need to look at. Okay. So yeah, um, that's why I like PDF because it's just so I, universal. I will I will look at those and uh, and I'm actually going to be doing a write up um, pretty soon. Okay, uh, awesome. And, and, and post those. So and uh, yeah, overall I, I was very impressed with Outliner. It was very easy to enter you know text just by click, clicking enter and all that. It's easy to move it around, you know, left or right in the indenting and all that. And I was, I was overall just very impressed with the apps. I'm still waiting for an Omni Outliner to see what they do with it because it's just they write great apps. And it will be much more extensive, I'm sure, 
But uh, I'm excited to see what they do with it. But in the meantime, I think Outliner is a great, great option for people to do that. And we do have a promo code for those that want uh, to test this out as well. Uh, the first person to email me, iPadPossibly, is at gmail.com. Uh, no, that's not it. <laughs> you know, oh, God. <laughs> start over again. <laughs> iPadPossibilities at, yeah, at gmail.com. Uh, subject line, promo, outliner. I will email that to you. So first come, first serve. And if you're watching a live show or a premium user, uh, you probably get first dibs on this. So. Um, yeah, I think they're great apps. I'm very excited to see your write-up of these as they come out. Yeah, and uh, Tim, we also do have a uh, promo code for Simple Outliner. Oh, awesome. So, so yeah. yeah, one per uh, person, so you can't try to get two at once. So uh, pick your uh, poison. or uh, They're not poisons. They're great apps. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but pick the app you want, and if that app was already taken and another one's open, uh, I'll send that one to you instead if you want it. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I, for outlining, I just use a regular, like, word processor. Yeah. I, I just I, put it in bullet mode. Yep, I tend to do Evernote within that app. Even though it's simple text, I'm not a huge outlining guy, so. Uh, so the, 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 the key about using an outliner instead of a word processor, even though some word processors will do this, is that the ability to fold up um, parts underneath your different, parts of your outline right. so so really you can you can work it a whole lot better if you're big into outlining creating big outlines yeah, yeah basically to, like to like microsoft that. word in outline mode basically yeah idea. right right yeah yep. and yeah i'm not a heavy duty outliner but i think they're great apps to have when you need to do that you know heavy duty stuff but uh i'm excited to see what evernote does they're adding some rich tech support later on this year and Shared notebooks and all that kind of stuff. Evernote would be killer if they had more outlining features. Yeah, it's just simple text right now, and that's a shame. But uh, with that said, that's enough about outliners and our thoughts on military revolutionary iPads. Let's get on to our picks of the week. Uh, John, are you uh, prepared for this yet, sir? I am. I am indeed. Um, So uh, a little application that uh, I ran across... um, I'm, I'm a, a fan of uh, Stephen Fry. I don't know how many of our audience know Stephen Fry. Um, very great British comedian. And he's got a, a technology blog that I hadn't even known about before I ran across this app. But this app is called Fry Paper. <laughs> and um, it's a free app in the iPhone store or iPad store. It's a, it is an iPad pad app i don't know if you can see the the uh where is it you can kind of not see his uh his little face here but uh fry paper uh is is just an interface to his his blog um but it's it's free and it's funny and uh (laughs) and uh you know i'd recommend people going and uh Reading up on what uh, what he has to say because he's a he's a humorous guy. So wow. fry paper. And yeah, the, it looks beautiful by the images I'm seeing here. It, yep. It's like an instant paper kind of deal with it. Very cool. Yeah. Any other picks or should we move on to Steve? Let's go to Steve. Okay. What do you got for us, Steve? All right. Um, mine's very similar except that this one is a. Uh, sort of blog interface for Brent Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> awesome. I love Ben Franklin. He's a great blogger. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is uh, yeah, he, he's a very old school blogger. He likes to to use the old school methods. But there's, 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 a thing, there's a thing in the iPad store now, in the app store for the iPads, called Vooks. It's like a thing that's really taking off now. Uh, video books is yep. what they are. So they're basically, they're books with embedded video. And I thought, okay, we're talking about the Revolutionary War. We're talking about you know, you know, that kind of stuff. So why not bring up a book? So this is Benjamin Franklin's book, and it's it's really it's really cool. Let me see if I can bring it up on my camera too. But it, it is it's a really cool way to consume probably what you've consumed a hundred times already. You know, in your in textbooks and school and so on, and. It's it's the story about Benjamin Franklin, his biography, basically. 
Oops, can close that. <laughs> now everybody knows that tomorrow I am off work. <laughs> I had a pop up notification. Nice. notification come up in the middle of this. So, <laughs> so it, it's a it. it the, the thing that I don't like about this is compared to an iBook is that the, there's no page curl. There's no page uh, turn. So, yeah. so that aesthetic feel isn't there. It's very linear like a web page. It has embedded graphics and, and so on. But at the top of each chapter, there is a movie or a video that you can start up. And it's descriptive of the, uh, the book. So yeah, of the chapter that you're in. So, is, it's, I think that a lot of there's, there's so many of these coming out now, these these books for just about everything, and I think this is going to be another game changer when it comes to consuming media on the iPad. And so I wanted to point that out. That's my pick. Very very cool. Well, I've got a couple picks today for you guys, and let me launch up the first one. I talked about this on the Friday show, and it's bills for iPad. It's a uh, dollar, I believe. It might have changed. But I wanted an app. And I didn't know I want this until I saw it, right? This happens a lot with certain things in the iPad. You don't <laughs> know you want it until you see it. <laughs> that's that's the that's Apple's mantra. Oh, yeah. That was the iPad itself. Yeah. You don't know that you need all that shiny stuff until you played with it. <laughs> exactly. So bills for iPad. What this is, it's a calendar for your bills. So you can see this is the month of July, and those circle days are all the bills I've had. So I can see on the 23rd, I've got uh, two bills. I have my, uh, I've got my uh, Dropbox bill, and I've got a donation I do to another podcast as well. And on the 30th, I can see I've got uh, my Hulu subscription will be due then. And so you can just kind of keep track of uh, when your bills are due. And this is very helpful because without that sometimes you'll get a bill in and it's like oops i didn't have the funds in there to pay that and yeah it's not good so bills yeah, that never goes well <laughs> that never goes well so tim doesn't have an automatic bill paying service <laughs> no i wish it had free money in there too but yeah i'm waiting for an automatic income service there yeah you go. that'd be great there you go some uh, some residual income app that'd be wonderful. <laughs> you should be able to shake it like you do with The Sims too. Yeah, The Sims Three. You shake it and just get new simoleons. Yeah, I was listening to Cliff at GSPN. He has this app. Uh, I forget what it is, but he started up uh, some you know video you know app, uh, not apps but video products that he sells. And every time he gets a new sale, his phone goes cha-ching, cha-ching. So, oh, nice. You know, at dinner, you know, his kids hear that. It's like, oh, we can have ice cream now because my dad's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's apps out like out for that to, you know, notify you when you make money when you're in that kind of position of something. Great. Things, so. I could totally see that going badly in in my house, you know, (laughs) because sometimes you have to use that excuse that I can't afford it, even though you you might be able to. And then then the kids, you know, appears from your pocket. (laughs) Cha-ching! Crap. Crap. (laughs) There goes that. Yeah. And uh, when he was at the movies, uh, his phone was vibrating. He turned on silent, but every time it vibrates, it's like, oh. Just made some money. <laughs> so I want to get on that bandwagon and start, you know, making money like that. <laughs> nice. But the next app, I thought we should do a timely app, and we've been talking about this declaration we want to create with our pages documents, and what better way to share that than declaration uh, for the iPad? So let me launch it up here. Oh, you stole my pick! I stole it, but you didn't use it. I didn't use it. Oh, you could man. have used this pick, <laughs> and that would have been fine. But so you've got the main text here of the declaration. It's not that long. It's just a declaration telling them, hey, this is what we're doing. And then you have the signers. So you've got all the signers, a little bio of them, as well as a wonderful little uh, their signature and all that. So Jason Smith here, delegate from Pennsylvania, born in Ireland, 1713. So you've got that there. You also have some notes, and those are some notes. Uh, June 7th, Henry Lee introduced a resolution urging Congress to declare independence from Great Britain, and all sorts of other notes there. You have the actual parchment, which is pretty cool, so you can see, look at what the parchment 
you know, looks like. It's not very legible, as uh, you can probably see. Uh, I probably could not read that if I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, I got it up on my screen now. It, it's, uh, you can read a word. You can read a word. <laughs> it's the one of the big words. Yeah, the big words. <laughs> not, not the little ones. And, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, but then it does have the image that is... The engraving, yeah. It also almost. has engraving here, which is uh, much more legible. And you can zoom in. You can, as I'm doing with my uh, camera. But yeah, you can physically uh, pinch in the zoom and all that, which I just did, which makes it a lot better. You see yeah. John Hancock? And uh, let's find John Hancock. There he is. That is John Hancock's signature on your iPad. And then you got all these you little know, signatures. You know, the interesting thing is it, it appears that they put lines in front of their sentences or uh -huh, it somehow, does. some kind of breaking there in front of sentences i'm not sure what what that is about but and uh, mm. yeah you have an, a, another page about and just tells you know about the creator and there's also a constitution ipad version now and geneva and u.s armed forces and <laughs> those lines are where the current government thinks that that's where they can fill things in yeah, <laughs> they'd like to change things. They'd like to not even think of it being important anymore. These these blanks are here for a reason. Let's you just fill, fill them in. Fill them in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. It's it's almost like a, a bullet list. If you if you look at the main text, it's all these things about he refused, he has refused, he has forbidden, he has refused, blah blah blah. Yeah. So when was the bulleted list invented? Maybe um, after, the after this. After, <laughs> after this. After this, yeah. They, they looked at that and said, "This lines just don't work really well. We yeah, need to do like, something else." What is this? The line. Yeah. So that's the Declaration of Independence, a very important document that I'm saddened that mo a lot of Americans haven't read it, and I think at least you know once a year you should know what's in there and what know what's in your Constitution. So. Uh, take the time this July 4th and just read it and know what's in your constitution and declaration of independence and just appreciate the that freedom that we have. You will read Twilight Book 4, but you will not read the Declaration of Independence? Yeah, it's a sad, yeah. sad thing. It really it's is. It's not that long. It's not. You could probably read it in, uh, you know, a couple minutes. I wonder if they have it in nine books. It, it does take some, well, some thinking to understand can, uh, it. We can find that out pretty quickly here. Uh, I'm sure it is. Uh, because if you run into a word, it, the, the Declaration of Independence was written in a English form that is probably not very native to most people. Yeah. So that, that's one of the drawbacks to it. Yep, it is in here. Declaration. And so, so if, it was, if it's an iBook, then you can look those words up in the dictionary. Oops, what am I doing? So, yeah, there are... Uh, Pro yeah, provided that they specified English as the language in the East Yeah, Club. funny story about that. Uh, you know, Lord of the Rings, they have British spellings of words because, you know, Tolkien's not American. And some of the letters, like color or whatever, I forget which words, but they said, you know, no definition because it was uh, spelled differently. Well, Tim, did you try that on, on regular English words? American English words? Yeah. It and they worked, worked well. okay? Yeah, it worked great. Because the the new version of iBooks 1.1 had apparently done away with assuming that the default language was English, so now when you open up a an EPUB and try to use the dictionary, if the EPUB doesn't have the language specified yeah. as English, um, there's no default, and so I have books that I've converted into EPUB that don't have English specified as the language, and it doesn't matter what lang what word I pick, it can't find a dictionary because there's no no so default. Let's dictionary posterity, and it found all future generations of people. So uh, yeah, um, yeah, it's finding things. I'm not sure we can find an old term here. Where's some old stuff, Steve, in the Declaration and Constitution? <laughs> I just closed it. I don't know. See, I uh, like in this. Thus and thou. In this EPUB, I uh, I tried to find the word natives, and uh, it says dictionary not available for this language. Ah. So um, it it's it's only with EPUBs that don't specify English as the language. 
so, or, or some other language as the language. I mean, so if, I did find a complicated word here uh, that I didn't know. Uh, consanguineous means uh, related. Oh, come on, you didn't to... know what that oh, means. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I did go to college, but we didn't have this in there. That's a great camera. Just, uh, I'm just impressed by how well it shows up there. So, relating to or denoting people descended from the same ancestors. That's consanguineous. So, word of the day. Word of the day. We might do that with. Uh, that should be your title. <laughs> oh, that should be the title of the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, that will be the title of part one. Of the go. same uh, iPad. The iPad possibly's podcast episode number fifty nine. Consanguineous. <laughs> <laughs> if you can say it. <laughs> really, I can do the uh, the computer talk saying it. Right? There you go. Yeah, Link to sure. denoting people descended from the same ancestor. So of the same blood to our show, right? Yep. Yeah. So that those are our picks of the week with some spinoffs and things as well. And with that said, I, I'd like to know where we, people can find you guys. So. Uh, all that kind of stuff. So, John, where can people find you guys at? You at? <laughs> uh, they can find me on Twitter at uh, J Finnan, J F I N N A N. Or also, if they're interested in more comments about the Outliner apps, I'm going to be posting that in a couple of days to blog.project-ipad.com. Very cool. I'm glad to see that's up, and I'm interested to check that one out. Yeah, not a lot there yet, but okay, I'm working on it. Very cool. So, Steve, uh, where you are? Where are you on the interwebs? <laughs> I am everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You're in Facebook. You're in Foursquare. Oh, uh, on Twitter, I'm S Bostador. It's S B O S T E D O R. You can also find information about me at iPadShow.com. It's www.iPadShow.com or at just Bostador.com or Google. Very See, cool. we were able to get bostadorgood.com for you. Yeah, I, I got that really early on. Didn't uh, didn't have to beat a lot of people out for that or anything? No, but there's other Bostadors who wanted to beat me out for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got a but, fake last name, so mine's pretty easy if I wanted it. I could get it. Yeah. So, awesome. And uh, iPad Show is a great show. I watch it every week, and they do live video and all that good stuff. Uh, Sunday nights, uh changes every week the time or does it <laughs> as long as things go well right <laughs> is it five o'clock or what time is it uh, eastern time easter time right now uh, it's you... it's midnight right now <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you guys do the show normally if people want to check it out for for the ipad show we generally do <clears throat> try to do it every sunday at three thirty, if uh, if all goes well but this time of course we're going to be doing it on tuesday evening Okay. So, did do the scheduling complex and all that. Yeah. Very cool. Well, check his show out. I watch it, and it's a great show. So, uh, if you want to find me, I am at t c h a t e n and at t p p n tv, and uh, it's amazing. This is our first two hour show, so this will definitely be in two parts. And uh, if you want to send feedback, you can do that by emailing me at ipadpossibilities at gmail dot com and two zero nine five four two ipad. And if you want to support this show, you can do that by going to tppn.tv and becoming a premium member for 2 bucks a month. That's the best way to say, yes, Tim, I love this content. I want more of it, and you'll get uh, a little bit more of it. I'm working on doing more and more of that. Uh, the more premium subscribers, the more uh, I want to do that. So um, subscribe today, and you'll get ad-free versions, and you get the shows out early, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All sorts of extra benefits. So check it out there at tppn.tv. Also in the App Store, the iPad Possibilities podcast app for $2.99, and that goes right to me, and it's a great way to support this podcast so I can keep up with hosting charges and all that kind of stuff. So uh, with that said, uh, this has been the iPad Possibilities podcast, episode number 59 and 60, the consanguineous and revolutionary iPads with Steve, John, and Tim. And we will talk to you guys again uh, sometime else. Uh, have a great night. So I don't normally do this, but I decided to include the four minutes of after talk that we had, uh, some some good discussions here at the end that I thought uh, that, that, that deserved to be on the show. So here they are, and enjoy. And, cool. and if, you or, if you order now, he'll throw in an autograph email. 
That is very true. Uh, yes. <laughs> Try to do that as quickly as possible with the support stuff. I have to, I want to throw it in there. Cool. It works. It yeah, works. It used to be a lot longer. So I've cut it down to the bare essentials and I, I don't do as much affiliate advertising just cause it's more free advertising for them than anything else. Do you, do you read that off of, or do you just kind of rattle it off the top of your head? That's off the top of my head. Those closers. I just, oh. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I've gotten good at it after s- almost sixty episodes now. Trying to figure it out. <laughs> You're saying it in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> the phone number was really quick to memorize. Is by show ten or whatever. It's like that's memorized. I can give people that out. <laughs> I don't even know off the top of our head. My head, our phone number. Yeah, I, I'm trying to learn it, my. It, uh, I've got a phone for the whole network. I I still can't learn, even though I say it a bunch now. As a matter of fact, I often forget that we have. A phone, phone up there until people call it, and then I'm like, oh, wait, what's this? A Google <laughs> Voice. Oh, crap, oh, that's right. We have a Google yeah. Voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, phone stuff's cool. I, I enjoy it, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. I've been doing a, a daily podcast, and that's just, that's so much fun just seeing what people are talking about. Uh, Twitter is uh, that's an amazing, like, source for content if you're looking to do, like, a daily podcast. Just do a podcast on some search term and talk about tweets you find. It's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> that could get interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them might have to take out some profanity stuff, but because uh, yeah. I have a the basically uh, real time possibilities podcast I do every night at like ten or eleven, and uh, throughout the day I just search for possibilities and uh, email those to Evernote and have a thirty minute show every night with you know positive uplifting stuff for the morning. So that's been fun cool. doing. Very cool. So yeah, what are you guys up to this week? Um, trying, trying to get an iPad app finished. Awesome. Is that the game? <laughs> it's uh, it's one of the games, and uh, it was it's just kind of a. Have you guys seen the the bacon frying app? Bacon frying. Oh, I'm just On dying for that one. Is that barbecue? <laughs> there, no, there there's one uh, called Bacon, I think, uh, on the iPhone. And uh, our our uh, our developer group uh, includes the guy who wrote that, who just kind of wrote it on a lark, and he's making a fair amount of money for something done on a lark. <laughs> and so uh, we have uh, we have a little game that we're putting together, which is uh, in the same general vein. It's not has nothing to do with bacon, but has has to do with something silly. And, uh, Cleaning your arteries, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we're 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 throwing that together. We we started that uh, a couple of weekends ago, and it's a uh, you know like a three weekend project. So we're trying to finish it up this weekend. So that would be a killer game, right? You have to clean the arteries before the baking fills yeah. it back up with plaque. Right. <laughs> it's just like well, awesome. you guys should check out you should check out bacon because it's <laughs> I, I'm not it's it's I'm kind sur- of fun. I'm surprised no one's done a. Uh, Operation where you, you have to pinch on the objects inside the body to pull it out or whatever. Oh, that's just dying to be done. That would be so yeah. cool. Yeah. So, so anyway, uh, hopefully we'll be finishing that up or at least getting it to the point of play testing it. Uh, um, I'm hoping tomorrow and, and uh, we'll do some play testing and try to get it to the app store here in the next week or two. Cool. Very cool. All right. Wait. wait. Well, well, this, this was has fun. been a fun night, yes. Yeah. Let's do it again sometime. I'm sure uh, if you're able to do this uh, again anytime soon, uh, Steve, but it was fun. I'm always yeah, happy to, dis- to disrupt your show. Okay. <laughs> well, you're, all, you're always welcome to disrupt the show. Uh... I think this uh, this topic has been the most fun uh, to do in a long time. <laughs> Just because it's so wild and out there. and I, I haven't done one of those in a while. I honestly stared at the screen for at least... 15 minutes <laughs> cool. okay it's a war and we have ipads <laughs> what how what huh it's like i was thinking like it's, what it's july 4th uh let's do this crazy crazy idea that just that i don't know if it would work or not so i think it did it, it worked out it yeah, worked it out yeah, it really like did it. yeah uh, it was fun yeah it was all right, cool. Uh, cool. So I will let you guys get some sleep, and I think I'll edit this tomorrow morning. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Crazy too, thought, good. but people with the app and premium, yes, uh, wait till noon to. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, Tim, um, just a comment. Yeah. 
um, I was listening to one of the shows, I can't remember which one it was, and you got the intro music creeping too far into the show again. Oh, I do. Yeah. Was so it a just, live show? I think it was uh, the live show. I don't remember if it was last week or the week before, but... Okay. Good um, note. Thank you. Yeah, just something to watch out for. Okay, cool. Thank you. Because it's, uh, it, it's cool to have little whistles going on at the same time you're talking, but... <laughs> yeah. I'm also starting, a, I've got an, an intro uh, network thing I'm doing now, which is, uh, I like it. It sounds good. It's going to be on the newer iPad shows and on every other show I'm doing right now. Oh, cool. So, cool. Listen for that. I'd love comments, see if it's if it sounds good or not. I think it's a nice opener, very declarative, whatever. So, Excellent. Yep. It's All right. Good talk get to you guys. Sleep. Get some sleep, everybody. <laughs> All right. We'll see you later. Okay. Take care, Steve. Bye. Bye. Bye.